Listen, if there ever was a Paul Bunyan, his name would be Will Chamberlain. His numbers, every every time I hear a new number, it's just like, it's amazing. I tell you, when I was a kid, and the older older uh, pe- uh, people in my family would talk about Wilt, it was almost as if they were talking about Bigfoot. I was like, somebody did, like, scored 100 points or average 50. It was, it's just beyond belief. Well, I've been coaching him for two years now, and... I marvel at just watching him play. I he see flies. what you mean. <laughs> his strength is uncanny for a tall boy, and his agility is the same as our number 21 over there, Little Marty Hughes. Wilt was probably the most powerful, strongest athlete that I've ever met. You could see the power. He was strong. He was a magnificent athlete. Magnificent. He did things that you wouldn't expect a big person like that to do. Great stamina and strength. We had big players before him, but they didn't quite look like Wilt. Chamberlain was a giant. You have no idea how physically imposing he was. I was 6'11", 229 pounds. I've never seen a person that big. What was your playing weight? About no. 275, 280? No, no, no. My, no, my playing weight is around 300, 310. He was like a giant redwood tree, the biggest man I had ever seen or played against. My God! I'm taller than everybody that comes on this show, then you, you've just thrown the whole curve off. How tall are you, exactly? 5'11 and a half. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to look at the artist Gilmore and Will Chamberlain together. The artist says he's 7 feet 2 inches tall, and Will standing up is a good 2 inches taller than he is. So they never have really been able to understand the correct height of Will Chamberlain. He's been anywhere from 7 feet to 7 four. His hair were as long as ours, it'd be 8 feet tall. I remember one night he looked 8 feet tall, he scored 100 against the New York Mets. <laughs> None of us had ever seen a player of that stature, uh, that size. What, what comes to mind for you regarding Will? Well, for me, what comes to mind is just how physically dominating Will was. I mean, his size and strength and athletic ability, uh, uh, he had a great variety of, of really incredible uh, strong points to, to his athletic skills. Uh, it, people don't realize that, you know, he can, when he went to the University of Kansas, he competed in the shot put and the high jump and the quarter mile, uh, in addition to playing on, on the basketball team. You know, he, he was really a superlative athlete. I mean, he was the greatest athlete I think that's ever lived. The strongest man that's ever played this game. The strongest uh, basketball player that ever lived. They always said he was by far the strongest person oh, who's they, ever they, played they, the oh, NBA. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. he lifted me up like with one arm like nothing. He was so powerful. He came to the gym and he would do a tricep extension that the big guys, the strongest guys, would do, let's say, 120 pounds. He would come and he would do 150, 170 pounds. That's how strong he was. I saw him pick up 500 pounds. I almost dropped off the roof watching. Him and Johnny I mean, I'm a guy bench pressing around 600 pounds. I'm gonna at my 600 best. pounds? Yeah, right. Chamberlain gonna freeze the ball now. Jerry West bumps into that big giant, bounces off. Let's take a look at that again. Man, that's like running into a solid door. Earl Monroe against Gail Goodrich. He got inside, he put it up. He's hammered by Wilt. There was body contact. Okay. And a lot of it. Well, maybe he didn't have any nerves in that part of his body. He didn't feel that. Philadelphia Baltimore score you saw. That's the seventh game in the Eastern Conference Final. And Bob Love is shaking up and down on the floor as he missed that layup. Goes up. Chamberlain hits him right in the stomach. And that really had to hurt. Robertson. Chamberlain. Not, not only the ball, but Robertson down. I mean, but he is strong. Oscar's a big 6'5", and about 215. He's probably the strongest backcourt man in the league. You know who Wayne Emery is? When he played, he played about 275 or 280. He used to be on Will's arm, going up for a dunk. Will would say to him, what floor are you getting off, big fella, before I dunk you in the ball? Will Chamberlain is so strong that he can get it up there with anyone hanging on it. It's called a broken arm if he gets in the way. Sheer strength. I shuddered every time I had to go up against Gus Johnson. He's the strongest forward in the NBA. He was the LeBron of, the, of our deck. Six foot six, 235 pounds of muscle. Great center, Walt Bellamy. He's real fine defense. He muscles his way to the basket. 
Well, I'm 8 to 6'11", 252 pounder. Thurman was a monster in the paint. I was 6'11", but I've never seen a person that big. 7'2", 290 pounds that particular season. One time in a game, Casey Jones tied him up. He was really upset. And so, Will Chamberlain picked up the ball with Casey still attached, brought it to his chest, and threw a two-handed chest pass with Casey still on the ball. You know, I'm trying to look at the artist Gilmore and Will Chamberlain together. Artist says he's seven feet, two inches tall, and Will standing up there a good two inches taller than he is. The artist probably the strongest human being that you ever meet. Seven foot two, one of the strongest people on the earth. Bob Lanier is six foot eleven, played at 280 and 290. You know, the first time I went up against Will, I was in Detroit, and I'm pushing him. Will, he turns around, picks me up like I'm a little coffee cup, and moves me out the way and says, son, don't do that no more. Don Nelson was as strong as a blacksmith, counted many of his shots through sheer strength under the board. Wes Unsell, built like a linebacker, played center in the NBA in about 280, and bodies would literally bounce off him. I figure if I weigh 240 and he weighs 300, he was... Still, the most imposing physical player that's ever played in this league, period. There's no one that's come close to him in terms of just physical prowess. On top of that, he's a great athlete. Total monster. Just music, I, I can't explain to you. An excellent all-round athlete. He could play sports other than basketball. You could have been the best decathlete mm. in the world. Mm. Great, amazing athlete. I don't know if people realize he bought, I think he ran a 48 second 440. I think I had the ingredients. I think I had the properties of uh, uh, strength. Uh, uh, stamina, a certain amount of agility. We, we've heard all the, the myths and the legends about Will being a terrific all-around athlete. Like when Will Chamberlain started a discussion about being able to touch a certain mark on the backboard. And Lenny Wilson, uh, the big fellow says, uh, don't come in here, little guy, with that stuff. <laughs> Monroe. Put it up. At yeah, and Chamberlain snaps it out. That's seven times Will block shot tonight. Probably the greatest play I have ever seen in my life. Uh, Will Chamberlain was involved with, with Gus Johnson. Will was standing there. Gus goes up to dunk it. Will catches the ball, throws Gus to the floor. Still holding the ball, they carry Gus off the court with a dislocated shoulder from bouncing off the floor. I don't see how anyone in the NBA will ever be as strong as he was. You see the defensive play on the part of Will Chamberlain. He's been a tower strength on the boards, but he's been picking up men, cutting through, and guarding Phil Russell very closely. Havlicek and Russell. Chamberlain on the defensive board. It's unbelievable. That was amazing. He was absolutely, truly amazing. Will could do whatever he wanted to on the basketball court. Strong, palmed a bowling ball, a 16-pound bowling ball, then put his fingers in the sockets and the holes, palmed it like that, and held it out. Well, sort of toying with uh, the opposition, <laughs> getting the ball over to Joe Caldwell. I actually saw this, and I think to this day people don't believe it, but he, he, he wasn't at the top of the circle, but he was about three steps behind it on a free throw, and he ran to the free throw line took off and dunked the ball. Will Chamberlain is, was an extraordinary athlete. Okay, I already heard him reference at the Olympics this year being the greatest beach volleyball player of a certain era. What is something that I beat in any sport that uh, Will accomplished that many people might not know about? Polo! Water polo! Oh, oh, oh. Harness racing. I want to ski at over 100 miles an hour. When I ride my cars, I go as much as 180 miles an hour. And uh, most people dream of doing those things, but never have enough nerve to try them. The Kansas City Chiefs drafted him for tight end. I know you did a, what, a 4.4 and a 40-yard mm -hmm. dash. Yeah, that's you were right. a sprinter, yeah. even boxing. We came with a concept of Will Chamberlain fighting Muhammad Ali, and I was going to manage Will. <laughs> you know what happened, though? No. <laughs> Herbert saw Will and got afraid and thought it might be an upset because Will was so big. You know, Ali was 6'2", and Will was about 7'2". Yeah. And so uh, Herbert backed out. And he was a manager of Muhammad. My thing I like is to challenge guys who are smaller. Guys are supposed to be quicker. It wasn't just my height that was getting me across these various sports. There were some other intrinsic things that I had that made me a good athlete. He was a magnificent athlete in today's standards. Magnificent. He had a lot of speed in the same way with his stamina. Great stamina and strength. Well, for some seasons, actually averaged more than 48 minutes a game. He played every minute of every game. It's unbelievable. Just a magnificent athlete. In the air. No. Rebound McMillan. Long pass to Chamberlain. All around. Here's Clemens. Chamberlain for once. Got a 
breakaway. Watch this now. As it is cleared by McMillan, Jimmy spots him and loops it deep. At this point, don't get in the way. He's also a crack quarter model and holds the state shot put record. My gosh, he was a great track man. He could high jump, he could broad jump, he'd throw the shot, he'd run the quarter mile like a deer. I saw Wilt Chamberlain run under two minutes and 880 yards. I saw him put the shot over 50 feet. Wilt won the Big 7 high jump championship with no practice at all. Wilt Chamberlain clears the bar at 6 feet 6 inches. The basketball star Wilt Chamberlain of Kansas clears the high jump at 6, 6 and a quarter and wins the toss for first place. You know, Wilt had a great shot outside. He used to win games in horse. But you never saw it because he knew where his value was. I'm going to tell you something. As bad as it looked, you didn't miss by that much. You just see me make two in a row. No, I had to say for a fan. There you go. The old bitch is five dollars. I just paid the last three of them. I don't care. This is the one I'm talking about for five dollars. Get it up! Get it up! Wilt did not like to lose. He always wanted to win. Wanted to win in everything he did. Everything he did. There's only one other athlete that I would compare to Wilt from a standpoint of being competitive and wanting to win at everything they did. And that would be Michael Jordan. If you beat him, you had to keep playing because he was determined to be a winner. What were his best qualities? I don't know which was the best, his strength or his smarts, because he's equally adept at both. The last thing that created problems was he was smart. We have to contain, you know, each individual to a certain extent, but we'll have to go out there and put a team, and that's what uh, is on my mind, is just what we can do best uh, to stop their team. It's no uh, one man against man, because uh, it's just as a count in the end, you know, I'm just hoping that we can score more points than they can. Go back inside the wheel. See what he does now from the line up, gives to Goodrich. And here's Jerry West, back to Chamberlain, back to Jerry. Oh. Ellis, back to Chamberlain. Give it to Goodrich, who was wide open. And that was a perfect pay. Chamberlain, one of the best in the game at handing off to the cutters. A lot of things you can do. That's why you enjoy playing with the Globetrotters. How many guys do okay. you think can get in the circle of the Globetrotters and do what they do? He said okay. one one. So you show what kind of dexterity, what kind of hand-eye coordination, what kind of rhythm he had. William McCarter. Lakers reach 89, they trail by 12. Time now so precious, 5.15. The goal of Chamberlain has it. Goodrich, Erickson as Los Angeles saves the ball and goes inside to Chamberlain who works against four wing Wrap around and Erickson inside the basket count. Oh, that was a great pass by Will Chamberlain. We have it on slow motion. Again, Will Chamberlain's long arms make this pass possible. Behind his back, Erickson picks it up. Bob Love fouls him in the act of shooting and he converts it fast. Chamberlain, back pass to Goodwin. Good! The throw is going to the free throw line. Oh, great pass. Now the Lakers use that play quite often. You'll see it again. Goodrich drops the ball into Wilt, then cuts down the middle, and Wilt perfect behind the back pass to Goodrich, cutting for the lane. Joe Caldwell from Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt on those boards, looking down the floor in the west, sending all four men down on the fast break. Joe Caldwell on that play, getting the layup. What we have to be careful of is uh, passing off. Wilt was willing to do whatever is necessary. Heck, he led the league in assists one time as a center. This guy was a phenomenon, as I don't know if people have an idea just how crazy that is. And you asked a question about how physical... Boy, they're belting all around, too. There's the biggest, strongest, and the greatest scorer of all time. Watch his look of frustration. Because if they can't block his shots, they give him the elbow on the side, right? That's right. Hoping not to get caught at. Harrison goes down hard and Jabbar is hot. And Ricky Powers steps in very quickly between Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was the most intimidating player to play this game. Foul by, foul by Gukas. Little fight going on there. Everybody's on the court. Here we go. He didn't really want to get him mad, but he could play the whole team by himself. I tell you one thing, Wilt Chamberlain is a very angry man right now. Play. I noticed you were 
shaking your head, Freddie Chas, when Russell partially blocked the shot and Chamberlain forced it through. He's just so powerful, Marty. Uh, we have our own Gene Wiley. has done that several times where uh, Chamberlain is just so powerful. He just comes right down and forces the ball through. And his physical prowess was unbelievable. I would love to see him play against some of these centers today. It would, be, it would, it would be pretty embarrassing for them to be candid with you. He played a game against the Detroit Pistons. In the game, he blocked 26 shots. On the 55 rebound game, how about that? Against Bill Russell. We've won seven scoring titles. He won nine shooting titles. He won 11 rebound titles. And then he left the league in assists one year. It's not possible for any human being to do the kinds of things that he was able to do. Nothing's impossible with this big man. When he was in the latter part of his career, the news media or somebody would walk up to him and say, oh, you can't score anymore. 50, 60, then he'd go back to passing the ball and whatever. And if you challenged him, that just took him to another level. Will owns over 90 records in the NBA, and he hasn't played in the NBA in the last 40 years. With him, we were a great team. I continue to call him the eighth wonder of the world when it comes to basketball. Oh, Chamberlain blocks it. Great play by Chamberlain. That's one of the finest defensive plays I've ever seen in basketball. Man hit him up in the air, he re reacted very quickly. Goes up in the air, Walker delays the ball, passes it to Love. He's got the ball now. Wilt on the other side of the basket and, and a great reflex action to pick the ball by Walker. Great play by Will King. Tremendous performer. This guy is just a magnificent athlete. There's no question about it. He's quite a runner. He's a good height jumper. He handles the weights and the bars. He takes excellent care of himself. Wilt work really works in physical conditioning. He's no surprise that he's so great. He, he works so hard to attain it. Wilt would not only block your shot, Wilt could go up in the air and catch your shot which was like, ooh. A shot that appeared to be three feet above the basket. Will jumped up and caught this ball with one hand. The referee called goaltending, and I hollered at him, how could you call that goaltending? And he says, what I just saw is not humanly possible. Will's unique athletic ability is what makes him stand out. The, the, all of the things that he was able to do, um, he's, he led the league in scoring, uh, field goal percentage, rebounding. He blocked a lot of shots. There was nothing he couldn't do on the court to be such a big man and so agile and so strong. Rebounding, blocking shots. I mean, like strength. I don't think as a player, you know, this, it's a strength of Will. Chamberlain, not, not only the ball, but Robertson down. Will uh, was so coordinated and yeah. was, you know, he was a powerful man. What about uh, the aggressiveness? Uh, did Will try to put a muscle game on you? Uh, Will's very strong. I can't stop him under the basket. He makes up his mind as well. I think I'm going to score this ball this time. He'll take me and the ball to the basket if he has to do it. The chamber would slam it, really slam it down with tremendous force. Yeah, they called me for an offensive foul and saying, well, you, you know, you, you used your arm to ward off chamber. I said, are you freaking joking with me? I said, I could be on the ground with two hands and I couldn't ward Chamberlain off. I mean, people don't even seem to understand. 50 freaking points a game for an entire NBA season? Are you kidding me? The, guy, the man averaged 22 and a half rebounds for his career. It, it's just, it's mind-numbing to me to think that somebody could score 50 points average in a game for 80-some-odd games. Play every, well, actually, I think, well, for some seasons, actually averaged more than 48 minutes a game. He played every minute of every game. It's unbelievable. The guy was amazing. He was absolutely, truly amazing. How many games would you play in a, in a season? 80 regular season games. 15 exhibitions and approximately 15 uh, playoff games. It's 110, 115 games. You travel in between them and take this brutal punishment so you know that you, he has to be in magnificent condition. Chamberlain's going to work on him. And made up his mind. Wilt spins around his defender and garners points 47 and 48. Wilt is coming right back at him, rooting, using all that strength that he's got. He's a big one. Cliff, you can remember, uh, as well as I, back when we were playing, if Chamberlain was a much younger man, if you got him riled, uh, school was out. He could score 60 to 100 on you <laughs> without any problem. Everyone said, hello, Wilt, how you feeling? You want to get the big guys to be mad. McGuire gave Wilt the key to the offense. He said, go ahead, big fella, take it away. Let's see how high we can fly. 
and he starts throwing down these thunderbolts. He goes 48-25 the first game, 57-32 rebounds the second, and then 53-55-43. Silly numbers, crazy numbers. You know what's in the fans' mind? They're thinking of the magic number, 100. <laughs> Looking right on in. Back to live action as Chamberlain turns and goes to the basket. The defense that time. Long pass into Chamberlain. Whoa, beautiful. Chamberlain with a dunk shot. He just tied the record, ladies and gentlemen, for a regulation game. Two adults to Chamberlain. He's got it. And the Warrior bench are jumping for joy for him. Every time he scores, they will jump up in the body. Chamberlain has 75 with 10 minutes to go. The kids are all out. We want 100. Harry Phillips got it by Sam Jones. Thomas Sherry got it by Sanders. Into Chamberlain. He's deep. And he dips it. If you know anybody not listening, call him up. A little history you're sitting in on tonight. 18 in the second quarter. 28 in the third quarter, which tied his own record for a quarter. And 15 so far in this quarter, with six and a half minutes to go. It's possible. Nothing's impossible with this big man. New York now is really trying to screen Chamberlain off and fouling the backcourt men, trying to prevent them from getting the ball into the big man. He's got it. Fouled on the play. He made the shot and he's fouled. The first goal on Darrell Imhoff. History being written tonight in Hershey. The big man has broken the record and he's gone for more. And Frank McGuire and the Warriors will take time out here in Hershey. Foul, but a personal foul. Here's Chamberlain over Jabbar. That time, Kareem backed up a little and gave in, I think, rather than contest Chamberlain. I, I always defer to, to Wilt and, and Bill because I learned from them. And uh, I, I always kind of feel that I, I've yet to see anybody average 50 points a game. Think about this, he averaged 50 points a game for a whole season. You have to have energy to even do that. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. <laughs> so, Wilt and Bill, they, they are like the, 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 myth, the mythical guys in the game. Chamberlain taps it in. Great follow shot by Wilt Chamberlain. The fans here in Hershey are asking, how many does Chamberlain have? He has 75. He's already broken his own record. He's going for the Just conjecturing here how many can he make. He's got nine minutes and 24 seconds left, and the guesses are running as high as 100. Dodgers the wolf. He's at the baseline. He's up. He's got it. He's fouled. 139 to 122. Chamberlain is the greatest scoring machine the game has ever known, and he can score on you in dozens of ways. Here's one you can't stop the fall away jumper, and he hits this repeatedly despite good defense that Chamberlain banks it in. They used to say about you, though you were by far the biggest and strongest man in the league and uncommonly skilled for a center. And to Chamberlain. Chamberlain scores! His teammates were very, very happy that he was scoring the points and it allowed us to maybe be in more ball games than that. Wilt could score against anybody. Here's a little bit of a misconception. Russell's teams won the championships. Right. Russell played very well against Chamberlain, but a lot of people think, hey, Wilt was scoring 50 against everybody else, and he wasn't doing diddly against Russ. 62 one night, I remember very clearly. 62 off you? Yeah. I won't ever forget that. I didn't want him to score a lot of points. No, no, no. It took me years to find out how to play him, because if you play him one, you can't play him the same way all the time, because he'll make adjustments. I had about four or five different ways I'd play. But the, the, the idea was that I never could stop it. But I could put some speed bumps. And that's the best I could come up with. That fall away jumper just cannot be stopped. Beautiful. Imagine a guy getting 75 points and you still have eight and a half minutes to play. He got another one. 
He's fouled by Willie Knowles. He has made 77 points. Now, Chamberlain once did score 78, but in overtime. And if he makes this foul, he ties in regulation time what he has once accomplished in overtime. We played against Kansas in Will Chamberlain's first college game at Lawrence. The scouting report said that he was going to devour us, so we had to play extra hard. And he scored 52 against us, his college debut. If you're breaking down Wilt to someone who had never seen him play, this guy could run. Right. He was huge. Yes. He was athletic. He could shoot the ball because the fadeaway bank shot was in part of his repertoire. How many have you scored so far this season? 3,995. Oh. He is five points short of 4,000 points. Did you guys employ what we call the hack-a-shack? Was there a hack-a-wilt mentality or not? Only if he was right under the basket looking to dunk the ball. But once he got it inside, we double and triple team him. Never has he been as accurate with his turn jump shot, even though he had two or two and a half guys. Chamberlain over Borwinkle. He gets it. That's almost impossible stop. He just forget it. If he makes it, it's a good shot. If he doesn't, it's a bad shot. You've done your job by keeping him out of the middle. 1967, Wilt start of the streak of 35 consecutive shots without a miss. Made Landry. 35 in a row, and they weren't all finger rolls or dip a dunks Trust me. For the most imposing score in NBA history, Wilt Chamberlain would not only score points at an unprecedented rate, he would leave opponents in a state of shock. There's Chamberlain, he's deep. A deep back shot from 12 feet out to the left, the Court. Chamberlain holds the ball high, away from, Wilt, uh, from uh, Willis Reed, who's got position behind him. Chamberlain turns and shoots outside, good. If you took all of the skills that are required to play the center position of the game of professional basketball, no one center could do as many things as Wilt did and do them so magnificently. I remember when I got the newspaper and the newspaper said that he had scored 100 points for I thought it was a typographical error. It wasn't. Nor was the fact that Chamberlain would average over 50 points a game for that historic season. That is the most mind-boggling thing I've ever heard of, to play over 80 basketball games and average 50 points a game against the type of talent that he had played against. He had 78 in triple overtime. He's passed out now in regulation. He has 79. Magnificent performance, ladies and gentlemen. Here's an announcement by Dave Zinkow. He just made two straight fouls. He now has 81 points. The ideal situation in basketball is that if you can attack inside out, I think you have a tremendous advantage. You know, very few teams are, are, are finding guys to be able to do that and have that element to your game. A quick turn to his left in the drive to the hoop. That's one of the best moves that we've ever seen Chamberlain make. So the Lakers get it. They go to Wilk with it. He's going to the basket. And he did it with a right hand because he has no medication. He took no painkillers. Bail a pass into the corner to Erickson. It goes to Chamberlain. Chamberlain with his back to his man guarding Will Reed. Fires out, takes the back, lays it up. It is good. Beautiful move by Chamberlain. It's called a broken arm if he gets in the way. Macmillan lobs to Chamberlain. Will turns against Jerry. There's on the line right there. No foul. Parker scored seven straight points. West, he hit one. And then 47 to play. Clock stops on every foul. Lakers steal it. Chamberlain scores. Here come right back to trail by seven. And Chamberlain will go to the line. As Reed works here, you see in the replay, slams and Willis up trying to get it. Hit him on the arm. Chamberlain has made Philadelphia's 100 point. He has just now put them at 150. He has 86 points. Chamberlain trying to get over 90. Again tonight. Double teaming on Erickson. Chamberlain gets away, away from Bowman. The Warriors 153, the Knickerbockers 130. Game at Hershey PA tonight. Chamberlain, 32 field goals, 25 foul shots, 89 points. Records are falling left and right. Here we go, then. Another record is just falling. Into Chamberlain. It in, gets Reed up. He did a number on Reed that time. He had Willis Potter. I think we, Reed was expecting a finger roll. And uh, that was not exactly a finger roll. Take another look at this move by Chamberlain. Oh, Take that. Turn of the Warriors 
touch the ball, the crowd gets into that frenzy. 90 points. 90 points. Working on 91. Chamberlain makes it. Chamberlain has 92. 60. The ball was not dropping for Boston in the first half, but it sure is in this third quarter. There's Chamberlain underneath, and he dunks it. Happy to be with you on this historic occasion. The big man of the Warriors and the big man of the league has 92 points. Most people never saw Wilt because it was all black and white. Wilt was playing today. He would own the league, not a franchise. You couldn't pay him enough. Championship on a foreign court. That was Boston, 1969. They won it here. Because the big guy to my right had a rough and night. Chamberlain puts it up. Oh, basket count. Lucas, four seconds, and both there. I think he changed it to a little scoring tonight. Because he worked with that one. Foul is on Lucas. Bob Love certainly taking advantage of his height over Jimmy Miller. He's about three inches taller than Jimmy and just turns around and shoots over. Jim Fox trying to guard Chamberlain. Cannot do it. No scores. And the Lakers close to nine points. West to Chamberlain. Slam dunk. He's had about four or five offensive rebounds alone. And when you do that, you're going to get second shots, and that's why they're winning with their second shot. Chamberlain against Fox rolls it in. That's what he calls his finger roll, and that's a tough shot. He just don't block that shot. Will Chamberlain, the Philadelphia 76ers, an all-star choice and the most valuable player of the league. The tallest, strongest, highest scoring man of the NBA. Wilt has had seven seasons with over 2,000 points. On top of this, he set a new record of field goal percentage last season. As the all-time high scorer of the league, Wilt sets records every time he plays. The biggest, strongest, and the greatest scorer of all time. When this giant walks out on the floor, the 76ers automatically have a great number of points. Man's averaging 50 points a game. <laughs> He's averaging 50. A bad night is 44. Actually, I made the cover of Sports Illustrated twice. I was once in Wilt's armpits and once in Kareem Jabbar's, or Lou Alcindor's, if you will. Uh, <clears throat> but you could tell which guy had a problem by the difference in the expression on my face because uh, I can just picture now that big number 13 and I'm leaning up there with my arm in the middle of his back and uh, he's leaning back and calling for the ball up in the ionosphere and gets it and backs into me and he either shot the fade away uh, or he shot what he called his finger roll. And the finger roll shot, he tended to set up on the right hand side of the basket he would catch the ball take a couple of crab dribbles inside and you're leaning on him hard he'd move you back three or four or five feet and you never took a step all it did was just take the bottom off your converse all-star sneakers it didn't last very long playing against will he just run the rub right off the bottom of those shoes one will chamberlain driving on russell That's the divisional line picked up by bill bradley Egan is on the opposite side of the court as Chamberlain gets the ball. His double team puts it in nonetheless. Stations to identify themselves right after this shot. Chamberlain. First quarter, it's 32 to 21. In it comes to Chamberlain, Reed guarding him. And will get it. Resting quite a while. Chamberlain wheels inside, rolls it up and in. He's back in there. It comes into Chamberlain as the Lakers put it in play. Happy Hairston returning and Ellis leaving. Chamberlain puts it up and in. How would you fare against today's tennis? At 30, I could probably average 60 or 70. 70. Average 70 against these guys. He'd probably average 75 a game if we were playing today. You know, you know why I say that? Because you can't put your hand on guys. When I played, you could hand check them. Now you can't hand check them. So it's much more difficult to stop players that way. But wait a minute. Yeah. What about against the Elijah ones? He's, he's quicker than I am, but I believe I'm faster than he is. Or was at one time. Wilt and Shaq. It'll be interesting because I think Shaq powerfully built. Wilt was strong up top. You know what I, mean? I mean, but Wilt just went laying those little flippers and dunks and whatnot. You just can't keep him out from underneath the basket. Listen, how would you play Shaquille O'Neal? Play like Shaquille O'Neal? You know, uh, first of all, you just uh, uh, find the things that he does the worst, and those are the things you feel they can do the most. As they call fouls of the day, you know. Shaq gets away with what I would consider murder. So they, uh, they, they let, let him go. Yeah, I mean, I would think that when you dip your shoulder and you run over top of a guy and the foul is called on the guy laying on the floor, you know, you're getting away with something. So, so uh, Shaq has allowed maybe to score some points that maybe he wouldn't get 
He uh, plays an entirely different type of basketball game. Mm -hmm. He uses his physicality. Mm -hmm. He's a big, strong young man, and uh, that works well in today's game. Mm -hmm. If he was facing me, and not so, not so good. I mean, I'm a guy bench pressing around 600 pounds. I'm at my 600 best. 600 pounds? Yeah. Will would take Shaquille O'Neal and move him around like he was a rag doll. You never wanted to make him mad. Fortunately, he was very easy going. You know, he just wanted to be left alone and let him play and score his 50 points. And yeah. If you didn't bother him, he never bothered you. But he was a wonderful physical specimen. Eddie Gottlieb, who owned the Philadelphia Warriors, was a promoter. And in order for him to make money to pay his bills, he thought the best way to do it was to have guys who led the league in scoring. So when he got Wilt, he wanted Wilt to score because it brought people in. Do you know the Boston Celtics didn't sell out with all the winning that they did? It was wow. Wilt who brought the attendance. It wasn't Russell and the Celtics. People came to see him do what he was doing. That's why I said to him, Jim, never change your game. Because people were on him about, well, you're selfish. Okay, if I'm selfish, I'll lead the league in assists. Nobody has ever been able to do this in the history of basketball. Lead the league in scoring, rebound, and assists. And if they had block shots, he and Russell averaged between 10 and 12 block shots a game in their heyday. No good rebound, Rogers. Three on one break. One of the men is Chamberlain. They shovel it to Adels. Adels up with the ball to Chamberlain. Chamberlain scores! Simply done. Three on one break, and Rogers waited for him. Adels throw the lap pass, and Chamberlain stuffed it. He is so strong, so devastatingly strong. You give him the ball, and he would just jam it, and if you were in his way, he'd take you in the basket, too. Warriors have the ball, the fans, especially the kids. Come on, Will. Here's Larissa. Back to Rogers. Will's got the ball. He's gone up. He shoots. It's good. You know, it's, it's impossible to describe. There was no way of stopping him. He could shoot and score by dunking the ball every time he wanted to. He wanted to be the best in every aspect of, of the game, and uh, he was. Position naturally puts its tallest men on Will, yet he has the speed and agility to get around for those scoring chances. Well, I've been coaching him for two years now, and I marvel at just watching him play. He scored 90 for me in high school in 28 minutes, and uh, he had 15 points in one minute in, in the high school game. Frazier there, uh, watching him. That was Taylor to Chamberlain, up and in. That count. His strength is uncanny for a tall boy, and his agility is the same as our number 21 over there, Little Marty Use. You could see the power. He was strong. He was a strong kid. He could spread out, and he could hold a position. Uh, you couldn't push him around. Wilt was probably the most powerful strongest athlete that I've ever met. Uh, he could reach standing flat-footed nine feet six inches uh, with a ten-foot basket. Did you ever dream then of the pros and this all that has happened? Oh no Larry, I, I was I was happy to get a scholarship to go to college. You know, I, that's that's what I thought, you know, because I, I, I wasn't like Wilt. I wasn't a big bruiser. I wasn't gonna be the guy, you know, the, the 300 pound uh, uh, giant in, in the middle. I thought quite frankly, that he was more of a finesse player than a power player, and yet, when he did turn on the power and exert that physical presence, he was unstoppable. The first dunk that he had, I looked at those down guys, those cables, and they were rocking back and forth because he had so forcefully put that ball in the basket that it, it just bent that gooseneck and then it came back and those cables shaking back and forth. And Wilt got, uh, what was it, 52 points and 20, 30, 31 rebounds that first night. And Rucklick told me after the game, he said, I felt like a junior high kid trying to play against a professional. He said, I was afraid of having him smash my face when he dunked the ball. Wilt dominated the game as nobody ever has since. People always ask me, who's the greatest player you've ever seen? Well, Wilt was certainly the most dominant. 
You have the four highest averages of all time, and I mentioned at the top of the show, and this is what's stunning to me, to average. And I don't know if people truly, the general public, truly can appreciate what it means to average 50 points a game over an entire season. Some guys just say, hey, they're in a zone if they scored 50 in one night. Uh, when you look back, is that your greatest accomplishment? Without a doubt. I used to think uh, later in the season, you know, if I go out here tonight and score 39 points, I will have let my team down. I'm 11 points below whatever they expect is from me, and this is what uh, I have to go out there and do. No, it is, uh, when I look back on it right now, that and probably playing 48.4 minutes a game for that entire season are the two things that I really reflect on as being the best I've ever done in basketball. Well, that's 29 in this quarter. That's the new league record for a quarter. For one man, the individual record for a quarter, 29, just broken by Chamberlain. That's his own record. It was 28. Gives to Chamberlain, he's fouled, and he's hit right on the right wrist, right on it. My friend Wilt, Norman Chamberlain, was far and away the best player I've ever played against. For a number of reasons. First of all, physically he was still the most imposing physical player that's ever played this league, period. There's no one that's come close to him in terms of just physical prowess. On top of that, he's a great athlete. And the last thing that created problems was he was smart. First, Chamberlain steals the ball in midair. Then, with a combination of expert dribbling and coordinated speed, the stilt moves up court, setting up a give-and-go play that nets his high school teammates another two-pointer. A lot of people wonder how Wilt might do against some of the premier centers of today. I don't wonder about that. Uh, I would take Wilt and his youth against any of them. And McMillan rebounds to the Lakers. Clears to William McCarter, who had come into the lineup. Abby Hairston. Knocked loose. Hairston back. Chamberlain slammed up. One minute and one second to play. He has 98 points in professional basketball. I'll tell you, that's a lot of points if you're playing uh, grammar school kids, isn't it? Rogers throws long to Chamberlain. He's got it. He's trying to get up. He shoots. No good. The rebound, Luckenbill. Back to Chamberlain. He shoots. No good. In and out. The rebound, Luckenbill. Back to Ruckwick. Into Chamberlain. seven-foot one star of the Philadelphia Warriors canned an even hundred points one game. The only time the century total has been reached in the pro circuit. We actually, not a lot of people on either team realized that this was happening. Till probably Dave Zinkoff, who was the, the announcer, and announced 80 points, 82 points or something like that going into the fourth quarter. And then we all realized that this was, this was going to happen. From that point on, uh, all, all the shots went to Wilt, all the passes went to Wilt, and everybody on the Knicks team tried to get the ball to any player except Wilt. They would foul anybody, they just tried their best uh, to keep the ball away from Wilt. Wilt tried to come out of the game before he got to 100 points. Many people say, well, he was trying to rub it in, he was not trying to rub it in. Frank McGuire had made a pact with Wilt that we didn't know about. He told Wilt he was going to average 50 points that year, which he did. And then he also acted like he didn't know Wilt when Wilt was trying to come out of the game. He kept looking away from him. We were very, very happy that you know, he scored 100 points. And he was the only guy who had this down look on his face. And I said, big fella, what's the matter? What are you upset about? He said, well, I never thought I'd take 60 shots in a ball game. Yeah, but you made 36 of them, so we'll take that in the week. When you talk about great players, it's hard for people to fathom what he did on a basketball court. It really is. I struggle when, when people say, well, who did, he, who did he score 100 points again? I don't care who he scored 100 points again. To score 100 points in an NBA basketball game? No, you, no, you have to be... You have to have energy to even do that. Yeah. <laughs> Wilt has taken so many bad raps uh, from, you know, in terms of public relations. Uh, he was one of the nicest guys in the world. And he treated me, a uh, rookie, uh, with a great deal of respect. And 
I thought he was just a fine guy. I had, I had no problem. We had a, we had a really terrific team. At uh, that particular year, if it had it not been for one small defensive mistake, <laughs> a player who shall not be named <laughs> did not guard his man properly. And uh, had that not happened, uh, we would have beaten the Celtics that year, my rookie year, and we had slaughtered Los Angeles that year. They, they, we, we beat them every game that season in 61, and, and we would have beat them uh, for sure. In an 80-game season, he played 79 complete games. He missed eight minutes of one game because it got thrown out. Other than that, he played every moment of every one of those games. That was inconceivable to us. How the hell do you stay so strong all season? How do you avoid fouling out? How do you take a beating every night with guys pushing you, punching you, grabbing you, and come back the next night fresh as a daisy? Look one at Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Oh, for once, got a breakaway. Watch this now. As it is cleared by McMillan, Jimmy spots him and loops it deep. At this point, don't get in the way. Yes. McMillan again. That's four field for Jimmy. Go to Chamberlain. He's under the bucket. In by Jackson. Three seconds to play. They give it down for Chamberlain. He drops it in. Robertson bounce passes to Big Will Chamberlain and it's a basket that's what you got to do against both these guys you got to penetrate and pass off Hairston gives it to Chamberlain drops it in and he's fouled another look at it rebound taken in by Baylor right hand corner Baylor looks for a shot. Can't get free from the butcher. A bounce pass to Erickson. Low post against Bradley. Tries to hook. Lays off the chamber with his stuff in there. He's got to stick with his man rather than going in a position where he's not going to really do anything. Chamberlain slam dunk. He led the Lakers in scoring uh, just uh, under 26 points a game. 25.9. Yeah, Goodwin gets set to put up. Goes to his friend from L.A., Will Chamberlain. Chamberlain on a great pass by West. Jerry Lucas had to come across to protect, and what he did, that left Chamberlain open. Jerry West feeds to Chamberlain. We're underway now as Bob Love feeds up to Wilt Chamberlain. 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. West leads by four. 85, 81. Wilt Chamberlain. He didn't say that. All right, Wilt Chamberlain, surprise. But when you're that big, I think you want to make that one. Here's the last stuffer by Will Chamberlain. Stuffing near the backcourt marked by West. West starts toward the right-hand side of the court. And the high key against Barnett. Forces his way in. Fakes now shovels one of the baseline to Chamberlain. It puts it up and it is in. They let McMillan come up without a great deal of pressure. They let Jerry go in to Wilt. He gets an easy one. I was doing an interview the other day. And we were talking about Will Chamberlain averaging 50 points a game. Then at the end of the interview, the guy said, Oscar, do you think... Will Chamberlain could play in this game today. At that point, I said, you know what? S excuse my friends. I said, don't just show me you don't know <laughs> basketball. You have to ask me that. <laughs> to ask me whether or not Will Chamberlain could play against these guys today. <laughs> you know, that was an insult. What about Wilt in, in today? Would Wilt still be the dominating <laughs> presence? I've asked him this many times, and it's the same response. Right. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. First off, let's look at it from this point of view. When the Dipper played, the game was more physical. Back in that day, we put the bow on them. There were more centers in the league at that point. As the league has progressed, less centers. He would be able to be better today than he was then. Now, if you would see who's in, who's in the Hall of Fame, and there's, I don't think, but one center in the Hall of Fame of, of recent bench for the last 30 years that I didn't play against, and that's Bill Walton. All the rest of them I played against. Will was probably the greatest scoring machine this game has ever seen. Uh, and also probably one of the greatest all-around athletes. So Doc, I'll ask you, who's the greatest dunker of all time? And you can qualify this any way you want. You could be in dunk contest, in-game dunks. I mean, and, and don't be bashful. Uh, if it's you, we can certainly understand. No, no, no. Uh, well, I think Will Chamberlain. I mean, uh, you know, the 30,000 points that he scored, different than Dominique, who shot a whole lot of jump shots. 
a lot of them were dunk shots. And, you know, people who really don't give Wilt enough credit and the big guys like Shaq and Kareem enough credit uh, or enough conversation. You know, it's almost like the NBA started in 1990 <laughs> instead of 1946. But, uh, but Wilt, you know, he posted numbers. Uh, when he retired, he was the greatest scorer of all time. And, uh, and he imposes well night in and night out. And he, he can dunk from outside the lane. And uh, I, would, I would put Wilt as a number one dunk. Jamie comes underneath. Reverse slam dunk. The best dunk I ever saw was when Chamberlain would go up there and dunk that ball. And that was sensational. Because Chamberlain would slam it, really slam it down with tremendous force. You know, Wilt played guard with the Hall of Glorious And I guess he was the first and last seven foot guard in the game of basketball but we wanted him to handle the ball more because that's what the people came to see but the globe trials actually uh helped me a lot more than people can ever you know ever realize even though they were sort of a team that was a clowning team i didn't really clown i i, I played basketball you know, i think there will be a period of orientation for me across like it is for every newcomer in the nba but i think in the long run i'll be able to handle myself man to man with almost anyone in the league john havlicek looks to penetrate Chamberlain comes over and sets the pick for Archie Clark. Inside the Chamberlain, a pick and roll, and bang. This guy was a phenomenon. Uh, I mean, 50 points a game for an entire season, guys. I don't know if people have an idea just how crazy that is. I mean, I, mean, I played the game and scored like 36 or 7. I think I have to score 12, 13, 14 more points a game for 80-something games. That's insane. 22 and a half rebounds a game average for a season. The guy was the most dominant force ever. Chamberlain again underneath. Great shot by Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain has been retired for 40 years. He still holds 96 records in the record book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. It's crazy when you say it like that. Um, I have a question for you, Coach. Uh, do you agree with Wolf's statement? When he said, uh, if I had known that you would have made it such a big deal about the scoring record, I would have blown it out the water. I mean, was he that good? Could he just basically do whatever he wanted to do? The crowd here with the favor in the East, and they're uh, letting their feelings known. Cameron, on the West. I grew up playing with Wilt and against Wilt. You know what he would say when we played together? He said, shoot it. I'm going to get it off the board anyhow. You're going to miss over 50% of your shot. 23 feet and fires it. Zips in and comes out. No good. Great rebound by Wilt. Slam dunk. The thing that stands out to me as a basketball player, the greatest thing that he ever did accomplish was in rebounding. One night against Bill Russell and the Celtics. Now this wasn't against just a bunch of nobodies. Bill Russell and the Celtics, he pulled down 55 rebounds by himself. Now most teams don't get 55 rebounds. Will Chamberlain against Bill Russell pulled down 55 rebounds. So that's called total dominance of the game, and that's the kind of player he was. Will would have something to prove, and he would absolutely go out and do it. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, if he made his mind up to do something, it was pretty difficult to figure he wasn't going to get it done. Amazing. Low post, behind the circle, it goes to Baylor, left side, shoots, no good, rebound, three ball, Chamberlain, puts it in. Pressuring him, and there he goes. West shot is rebounded by Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain, most valuable player in the National Basketball Association this year. But Chamberlain, the Big Dipper, makes the big difference. All the games so far in this series have just been tantalizingly tough and close. People seem to think that your friendship with him helped you a little bit competitively because he liked you so much. That's a crock. Do you know what the NBA rebound record is? It's 55 rebounds by Will Chamberlain. You know who the other center was that night? It was Bill Russell. 
Now, how's that take it easy? Chamberlain misses, gets his own rebound. Rogers shoots. Chamberlain with the rebound, put. Play. Sports Illustrated had a cover and said, is Dennis Rodman the best rebounder ever? Oh, God. And Will was so annoyed. <laughs> and I cleaned it up and said, annoyed. He says, I had more rebounds a quarter than he had a whole game. Wilt manages 25 rebounds in the first half. This year, for a team that had the talent that uh, allowed Wilt to play the style of ball he did this year, it was not necessary for him to carry the whole load offensively. My first seven years, I scored a lot of points. Then I stopped scoring on my own volition. Uh, I tried to do other things. I was asked to do other things, and that's what I did. If I had continued to score, I would probably be averaging 40 points for my whole my whole lifetime. All the years while I was usually scoring all those points, I was leading the league in percentile shooting. And that's also important because if you take all the shots, then you should be making the highest percentage. Though he yielded the scoring title this year, he paced the league in field goal percentage with a brilliant 683, the NBA's most valuable player. Seven scoring titles, nine shooting titles, 11 rebound titles. When he was in the latter part of his career, the news media or somebody would walk up to him and say, oh, you can't score anymore. 50, 60, and then he go back to passing the ball and whatever. Wilt scores 22 in the first half. 45 points, 27 rebounds. Wilt has a great night with a total of 41 points. 46 points and 31 rebounds. He's murder around the basket. Here's McMillan missing. Forced the shot. Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain actually is the most devastating player in the league right now. He's so big and strong. And I believe Will Chamberlain proved himself this year to be the greatest player in the history of this game of professional basketball. We've known for years that Wilt could score uh, with the best of them and uh, establish scoring records. One year he even averaged 50 points a game. And in that year even had a 100 point effort in one single game. But this year, Wilt got the goal that he wanted. He won the whole thing. He proved to everyone that he's a winner and that he can play on the greatest team, play center for the greatest team in the history of this game of basketball. Wilt has the power, the strength to get the rebounds. And offense, we weren't relying upon Wilt to do all of our scoring for us. We relied on Wilt to play the center position and open things up so everyone could score. And I've, I've got to say this, when we got in trouble, Wilt may not have scored a great many points through the whole year, but when we got in trouble, we did go to the big guy and he responded with the big points when we needed him. Scoring. And scoring. The weapon the fans still love most is the stuff. Wilt style. Chamberlain with a rebound. Tucks it in. Chamberlain tucks it in. Boy, what a tough he made that time. The team that controls the backboards controls the game. And Wilt under the boards. To ensure the lead, Wilt goes wild. Off an inch, and Chamberlain's there with a big man under the boards, a miscalculation can turn into a scoring opportunity. Chet Walker. Basket is good by Chamberlain. A fantastic left-handed tap-in by Will Chamberlain. Going in for the layup. Up with the shot. No good. Chamberlain rebounds. Good! Chamberlain rebounds and scores, and he's fouled. Oh, almost blocked by Russell, and the basket is then good, followed up by Chamberlain. Very wet. Tip, Chamberlain. Basket by Chamberlain. In the final seconds, Wilt is fouled by Casey Jones. Although not the greatest foul shooter, Wilt can make them when there is something at stake. Today, it's only the last two points in the game. The end of a perfect day with a record 41 rebounds to his credit. The greatest scorer in NBA history can still hit the hoop. In fact, Wilt became the first player ever to shoot over 70% for a full season. And for the 11th time, he led the league in rebounding. His last season in NBA, he averaged 18 rebounds a game with the Los Angeles Lakers. He walked away <laughs> from the game without any fans there. He just said, I'm finished. Will Chamberlain's playing with four of my freshmen against Magic, Bernard King, James Worthy, Byron Scott, and Green. And it's game point, Magic throws a sky hook, Will blocks it, Magic calls game. And Will says, that wasn't gold tendon. That was a clean block. And Magic took the ball. He said, game over next. And Wilt <laughs> said, hey, coach, was that gold tendon? I said, no, that was a clean block. Magic says, what do you think he's going to say? They're his kids. <laughs> and Wilt says, all right, look, we're going to play a game till 12. 
winner stays and there'll be no more shots made at this basket. He blocked every everything. shot, 43 <laughs> years old. He was blocking everything. It was, it was unbelievable. So somebody used to play in those 80s games, who I asked who's the best player you ever played with or against, told me it was about a 50-year-old Wilt Chamberlain at those UCLA pickup games. He was, he was that kind of physical presence. Russell or Wilt? That's impossible. It's impossible. If, if you look at st statistics, it would tell you that Will Chamberlain was a far superior player. If you look at winning uh, championships, Russell would be the far superior player. Give a coach to take one of the two of them. I'm sure a lot of them would take Will Chamberlain. And I love, listen, I love Bill Russell. He's one of my best friends. But he, had, he played on a team where Wilt maybe didn't have the kind of players surrounding him he needed to win. You know, people keep telling me, oh, yeah, yeah, who's the greatest center? And they keep throwing out these names and they're saying Russell. Well, you know, Bill Russell is the greatest center in the history of the game for helping a team achieve championships. But from the pick standpoint of picking a player with the skills required to play the center position on both ends of the court, there isn't anyone that comes close to what Will Chamberlain accomplished. Michael's the greatest two guard to ever play the game and one of the most exciting players to ever put on a uniform. But to say that he's the greatest player ever and that he was a greater player than Will Chamberlain is ludicrous. Will Chamberlain was the most dominant and the greatest center to ever play the game, bar none. I mean, I'd love, you know, you can talk about Kareem and you can talk about Shaq and you talk about Akeem Olajuwon. And, and, there is any, there's no one, no one that is close to what Will Chamberlain did in his career. Best center, Russell or Chamberlain? Chamberlain. Best player ever, Michael Jordan or LeBron James or someone else? Will Chamberlain. Really? <laughs> 90, here's a guy, hasn't played in 40 years, still has 90 some records on the books.